Hey guys, I'm Chris. I'm Kathy. Uh, we are here in Alabama. We're waiting to pick up our load today. Uh, picks up tonight. Uh, TSA uh, runs overnight, delivers in the morning. So we had a little downtime and uh, thought we would talk about signs. Uh, something that um, I'm sure we've mentioned before, but it's definitely something to think about, especially if you're new to expediting, new to trucking. Um, we've all had experience driving cars, been driving for years, I'm sure, but uh, you can make it through your whole life driving a car, only looking at speed limit signs and exit numbers, and you'll be perfectly fine. But um, on a truck, it's uh, a little more important to uh, read some of the other roadway signs that uh, you normally may not think about. Um, First off uh, is way stations. That's something you don't deal with if you're just in a car, but on a commercial truck, you definitely deal with way stations. Right, and so. you've got to have the signs start with, uh, do you go in or do you, are you called in or are you not called right. in? So yeah, that comes about with your bypass or your best pass. That also comes about sometimes, like in Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, with directional signs on the yeah, side of the road. They'll, they'll, have lighted, light up. they'll have lighted signs on the side that says, uh, truck may bypass or truck must enter and uh, uh, on top of that you have to have the knowledge to know if you're hazmat and if it's a state that requires you to go through regardless whether it gives you a bypass or not so that's kind of on you uh, but beyond that it kind of tells you what to do um, a speed limit is very important when you're going through uh, the speed limits are all different California mm -hmm. is much different right uh, than the East Coast uh, you watch the signs that tell you to go through even if you get the empty lane uh, they're watching your speed and right. they will call you in if you're going too fast right yeah and the speed limit changes a lot of times from the time you get off of the interstate uh, as you get closer in the speed limit can change you know maybe 35 or 45 when you first enter then when you get closer to the scales it may drop to 15 or 10 or even five so and they're going to show you uh which lane to go in mm -hmm. so they're going to either route you to the right or to the left so you get the green arrow uh the x red x will come up on the one you're not going into right um and then once you're in uh, uh the lane to go through to be weighed there's a lot there too right yeah um I know some states like Oregon will tell you to turn off your lights. Uh, even if it's nighttime, they want you to turn your lights off. Um, they all have their own system and you just have to follow the signs to know what it is. Uh, some will say stop here on red. Uh, so mm -hmm. you have to actually stop to get weighed. Uh, some you just simply roll over at three miles an hour or whatever. So we'll just be sure to follow the sign, whatever it tells you to do. Um, and they have signs to tell you to roll your windows down a lot of times mm -hmm. so you can hear their speakers. They're going to right. talk to you. Yeah, which is something you should already know anyway. But Right. So all these signs. When we first uh, when we first got our, I went to get our CDLs, mm -hmm. uh, the going out on our run, um, the driver, the instructor told us, uh, did you see that sign? Did you see that sign? And mm -hmm. I remember that was kind of unusual. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't really pay attention because right. I was a car driver, like you said. Yeah, but... and, uh, and I think one sign in particular was like for a hospital. That's not something, you know, you might see it, but you don't really think about it and you're not going to remember, oh yeah, there was a hospital sign back there. But uh, she kind of made it a point when she was doing our driving test to make sure, you know, that we in a truck it's you right. and you watch notice the signs, the signs and yeah. yeah you actually know know what they are um the other another thing uh that you have to watch for is uh bridges and overpasses uh what the heights are height limit uh you should know the height of your truck i mean most tractor and trailers including our straight trucks uh, uh 13 6 is our max height so you don't you can't go in anything lower than that and these signs sometimes will be right before and sometimes mm -hmm. they'll give you heads up so you really need right. to pay attention to that you don't want to have to get um become one of these videos that chris watches <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um the another thing that's very very important is construction sites yeah. we can't emphasize that enough right. with the deaths lately yeah we just had the incident in baltimore um and it wasn't truck related but no. still it's a it's a good idea to take note and cars can get let's you not let related. it be truck related yeah right. cars can get you involved and uh they I, I don't think sometimes cars take it as serious right they're not professional drivers well well you know and driving is not 
you know, their top priority at the moment. They've got a thousand things that they're trying to do and driving is just to get them there. So they're thinking about what they have to do when they get there, what they forgot to do, what, you know, did they do this? Did they do that? So, um, you know, it's, it's a form of distracted driving really. So we have to be aware that that is, that does go on every day. So, so when you go into the construction mm -hmm. zones, they're going to tell you, uh, usually the trucks, which lane to be in. Right. And sometimes they say the left lane and you said that's right. Where... A lot of times, um, they will say, you know, specific, they'll specify the trucks left lane or no trucks in the right lane or whatever. And it's usually because they have one lane that's narrow and therefore it's harder for a truck to navigate or get through there. So uh, the, they may move the trucks to the left lane through the construction site. And um, uh, There's trucks uh, also entering and exiting. Mm -hmm. And this has happened. We've seen this actually happen where a dump truck will just be in, down in front of you and they'll just all of a sudden they just stop and go in. I right. mean, you gotta be very aware of yeah. this stuff or they come out in front of you. These dump trucks are coming and going and they're right. paid by the load. And they're, mm -hmm. if, you, if you will notice as I have driving, dump trucks, you know, they throw rocks at you <laughs> and they speed. Not on purpose, but they do. And they do, they speed. And then we found out, well, they're getting paid by the load. So yeah, in some cases, you gotta really be careful with that in the construction mm -hmm. area. And speaking of speed, you know, Almost always, there's a different uh, speed limit in the uh, construction zones, I mean, in the work zones. So um, we can all be responsible for ourselves. So, you know, good idea to pay attention to the speed limit when it changes in a uh, construction zone like right. that. Right, and it's so important in construction zones because people are working, you could you could actually injure and kill someone and you can get huge fines, you can lose oh, your yeah. CDLs. And you know, you're just going through it for a short time usually. So yeah. it's best to just lay back, let the cars do their thing and go through it. And then you can right. just get back to normal, you know? Yeah, and the next uh, hazmat, um, if you're hauling a hazmat load, it's very important that you, you know, <clears throat> plan your route. Um, and that you follow the signs for, you know, hazmat uh, tunnels, um, cities, that sort of thing. A lot of times they want to route you around major cities. They, you know, if, if you're not delivering there, you don't need to be in there with your hazmat load, especially if it's explosive or flammable. Things and definitely of that these nature. tunnels. I right. mean, uh, tunnels. Some of them are long. Mm -hmm. Out going under these mountains in Montana. Right. Jeez. Yeah. And they'll and they'll know if you went through there. Right. There's somebody waiting on the other side usually. Yeah, a sometimes, trooper, right. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And um, also, uh, you should know the weight of your vehicle. Um, any commercial vehicle, of course, is 26,000 pounds or more. Um, it's a good idea to know your empty weight. You know, just roll through the scales, see what your empty weight is, just so you, you know what your weight is. And, and then you have to allow for, if you're hauling a load, what your load is. But uh, some bridges, they do have a weight limit. And it's very, very important not to exceed that weight limit. Uh, you don't want to be the victim of that, and, you know, find out how much the bridge can't hold when you go crashing through it, so. And that's, and that's not on the big interstates. Right. But sometimes when you deliver, you mm -hmm. have to go in these towns, right. in Pennsylvania or right. Massachusetts, and you're going in these back and, little areas. Right, and especially uh, GPS, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's great to have, you know, a truck GPS. They should give you truck routes, but even though sometimes they will put you in places you shouldn't be. So yes. you have to be very aware and watch the signs before you do it. Cause yes, in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. I think it was, is where we got uh, routed with GPS to a bridge uh, that was uh, 12 or less. Oh yeah. And we couldn't go under and there, there was no warning until we got to it. And the funny thing is there was a UPS driver yeah, in and front a tractor, of us right. and he said, my GPS sent me here, and he helped us actually back out and, right. and get out and get, get yeah. turned around. Yeah, we, there's two trucks in a row, and uh, yeah. both of us had truck GPS, truck routes, <laughs> and it routed us through there. Yeah, and so. people get mad at you. The cars were like, ah, yeah. you know, <laughs> we didn't know. So yeah, it's, life it's best happens. to be safe. But, but uh, uh, one of our pet peeves is driving in the left lane. Mm -hmm. and especially trucks and blocking everybody if you can't mm -hmm. make it around a truck just stay back and wait uh in texas you'll get ticketed yeah, they watch will. for They're that stuff you are that. not to be in the left lane unless you are passing mm -hmm. 
you yeah. know we've talked about most trucks they do have the uh, restricted lanes lane mm -hmm. restrictions and uh and you and they will they we've seen them pull yeah. over trucks and a lot of times when you go through a city it'll say trucks no left no trucks in the left lane so right um, but this is just already, like a, but... a, a two-lane road mm -hmm. you know if you're on a two-lane road just just hang to the right as much as possible because uh well, it really messes people lane. up yeah, yeah. so if you um, have two lanes going in your direction yeah stay, stay in the right lane unless you need to pass if if the car's in front of yep. you or a truck or whatever is going much slower than you need to pass pass then get back over yeah so those <laughs> yeah <laughs> those don't, don't have your mail forwarded to the left lane you don't live there i know right i'm just like what is going on <laughs> you know all right but uh we are here uh in uh like you said in uh alabama waiting yeah. to pick up our load tonight it's a, it's a good paying load mm -hmm. uh, only going like 350 miles or yeah. something but um we're gonna be up in pennsylvania when we get this done i hope it's not snowing mm. but it's been really really warm here and um we did our walk just now yeah. so the dogs have been out and played a little bit and it's been a really good uh really good day so um we've got some, a little bit of video and i uh, hope mm -hmm. you guys are doing well out there and hope everybody that uh is new we've talked to some new hires and some people you know are are you know uh concerned if they sit for a second and can't find a job but but like we've said before things come and go sometimes mm -hmm. you get canceled on um but it all, nobody likes it <laughs> nobody but, but then you happens. get a, then you then you get back in the rhythm mm -hmm. of it but it's just it's just the beast of the business isn't right. it i mean it's not a land star fedex it's everybody it's everywhere uh, mm -hmm. people will book in advance and then all of a sudden hey guess what we've mm -hmm. we've extended the load or it's grew and you can't you know your box doesn't fit anymore lots of things like that mm -hmm. so we don't know the hows and whens and whys but uh it's just if it cancels you just move on yeah. and uh don't let it get you down always another one right so that's that's our little you know advice mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. <laughs> but we've been through it too mm -hmm. and we still go through it i mean yeah. anyway but um that's all yeah, you got that's it thanks <laughs> all right thanks for watching mm -hmm.